Are we good to go? Yep. Howdy. Howdy. There we go. I didn't have to do it twice. All righty. First of all, I want to thank all the guests for showing up. We had a lot of people that couldn't be here tonight, and each and one of y'all that could make it, it means the world to me and Rita. Second of all, I want to thank our vendors. Y'all are doing an amazing job. Honestly, like me and Rita, we're blown away. Next, I want to thank my parents. My parents, without y'all, I wouldn't be who I am. And I would like to thank Rita's parents. Without them, Rita wouldn't be here either. And we couldn't have been where we are now without y'all. And we really appreciate it. And we want to thank y'all. Love you. Last, I want to thank my beloved wife, Rita. She put this whole thing together. I like to believe that I helped, but I think we all know. <laughs> okay, I know what y'all are thinking. What's the groom being up here making a speech? This is weird. This doesn't happen. Um, I go to weddings all the time, and I see groomsmen up there, and that's all they are to me. They're groomsmen. I don't know what they are, who they are, why they're important, why they were picked. So I'm, I'm wanting to change that. I'm going to start by reading off some na the name, and I'm going to give you all a little snippet of what they mean to me and why they're here. Okay, we're going to start off with Brady Edmiston. Stand up, please. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and not lose my spot. I've known Brady since 2016. Brady is a funny guy, but I never really heard him talk much when we first met. Then out of nowhere, he'll hit you with these dry one-liners, and then that would be incredibly nerdy, and, but I found them to be super hilarious. Boom, he's gone, you know? <laughs> Turns out Brady is the best nerd friend you could ask for. There's not many friends out there that would enjoy me doing a deep dive into why the Jedi Order failed Anakin Skywalker <laughs> and not the other way around. Ever since he moved to Colorado, I look forward to the days that we get together again and nerd out. Here's a Brady. Next, we got Zach Wagner. I've known Zach since 2016 as well. Our friendship really took off when Zach invited me to this thing called a rave. It was a wrap after that. I knew this guy was going to be one of my closest friends for life. Zach and I have been through a lot together. There, are many, there were many hard times and hard breakups in which we were each other's greatest listener. And when, when we needed one the most, and honestly, that is the greatest quality you can ask for in a friend. Here's a Zach. <laughs> Russell Mendoza, stand up. Oh, man, here we go. <laughs> I've known Russell since August of 2014 when we became roommates. In college. Russell is the epitome of go, go, go. It's always let's do something with this guy. <laughs> Even with being the fast paced as he is, it never took away from him being a good friend. His smile is infectious and he could never stand to let you mope around the house. I didn't just get a roommate that day when I moved in, I got a new family, a friend, a brother. Rudy Rodriguez. I've known Rudy since 2010. I've met Rudy through sports in high school because our moms were at a football game getting too loud and they got to know. <laughs> I, got, I got to know Rudy very well through sports. We put in a lot of work together, pushing ourselves to be the best. He is one of the most charismatic guys I know, and when you talk to him, you'll understand what I mean by when I say this guy can be friends with anybody. Yep. All right, here's Rudy. <laughs> John Lloyd Donato, or JL. Stand up, please. I've known JL. Yeah. I've known JL since 2010. Ever since JL got to America, Federico and I have been have taken him under our wing. 
His talents are numerous, but if I have to highlight one thing about JL, it's his dependability. Literally last week, he drove 1,300 miles from Texas to South Miami. Yeah. 1,300 miles because we needed somebody to bring materials for my bachelor trip. <laughs> JL never hesitated when I asked him, and I guarantee you if I had to ask him again, he would do it twice over. Here's the JL. <laughs> Thomas Doan. I've known Thomas since 2007. However, I did not like Thomas until a few years ago. <laughs> uh, of course, that's a joke, sort of. <laughs> Throughout high school, I don't know if there was someone who could push my buttons better than he could, especially in art class. All jokes aside, Thomas is a great friend. He is someone I wouldn't hesitate bringing a problem to and asking for his take on it. I know he is a straight, logical, he'll give me a straight, logical answer and is well read enough to back it up every time. Here's to Thomas. All right, before I finish this up, I just want to say that this, uh, this was difficult not to repeat myself. All of these guys exhibit qualities that I hold in high regard when it comes to picking my friends. I love these guys and consider each and every one of them my brother. Last but certainly not least, Federico Evangelista, please stand up. I've known Fed since 2007. Through football, academics, and our love for music, Federico and I became friends, best friends, very quickly. Federico is an extraordinary guy. He is cunning, witty, and a passionate friend. If he wasn't, if he wasn't a damn longhorn only. <laughs> There's no way I can keep this piece short when I'm talking about Federico, so I'll wrap it up with this. If y'all know me, then you know I love quoting things. Movies, TV shows, cartoons, historical figures, etc. I'm always doing it. So I'll end with yet another quote. The dictionary defines superlative as the highest kind quality or order, surpassing all else or others, supreme. I define it as Federico Evangelista. As, as my best man, as a leader, as my best friend, he is of the highest kind, quality, order, he is supreme. Thank you. Big shoes to fill. Let's make some noise for Tori, guys. She's a little nervous, but we know she's going to do great. There we go. I got a text from Rita on March 14th, 2020. To everybody in this room, it's probably a date for COVID, but for me, it stands out because she said, I have a new boyfriend, and oh, I cut my hair. I said, oh my God, what's his name? She said, Nick Fawn. She sent me a picture of her hair, and I said, gorgeous, and I'll creep on him. <laughs> how did y'all meet? She said, Hinge, which is a stellar dating app. That's how I met my husband. She said, I think this one's a keeper. 
I said, I want to meet him. I'm so freaking happy for you. And she said, oh, yeah, you got to meet him. I would marry him tomorrow. <laughs> so with that said, Rita and I have known each other for 10 years. We met in biology lab. Uh, she fell in love with my butt, and I fell in love with her face. <laughs> we have been through uh, so much. Loss of pets, loss of family members. And when she met Nick, she became whole. The light in her eyes changed. She was happy effortlessly. The energy she would give off, the jokes she would tell got better, thank God. <laughs> My babushka, that's what I call her, which is funny. I'm not going to go on because I... We're here and we made it. And this is a match made in heaven. <laughs> so raise your glass to Rita and Nick. I love you so much. All right, not, uh, <clears throat> not easy to follow. Um, so I know I'm a little short, so for the folks in the back, you know, sorry, but maybe we'll shake hands later tonight. Um, I know I'm the only thing standing between you guys and the rest of the night, wedding cake, open bar, so I'll try to keep it brief. Um, my name is Federico Evangelista. Uh, I met Nick when we were in middle school. Um, we didn't immediately hit it off. Uh, he was like, he's kind of a little cocky, you know, thought quite a bit of himself. Um, but for some reason, he'd always insist on hanging around or uh, they'd always seat us next to each other in class. And I didn't have it in me to just stonewall this guy. So, um, so eventually, weeks pass by, and basically we're friends and acquaintances. Uh, months pass by and, you know, doing sleepovers, Xbox until like the early morning. And then years go by and, you know, we're hitting the bars, going to karaoke, dragging Nick out of IHOP because he fell asleep eating pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, sometime during, like as those years passed, I can't tell you when exactly it happened, but I realized that Nick was one of the most loyal, reliable, and kind-hearted people that I know. Um, this is a guy that has trouble like making selfish decisions for himself. Like he always wants to make sure that like everybody around him like is fine and like before he even takes a seat, he just wants to make sure everybody's like, you know, good. Um, so I'll just shift gears here to Rita, the prettier half. Uh, <laughs> I haven't known Rita as long as I've known Nick, um, but from the time that I have known her, um, I can tell you that she is one of the most kind, caring, and thoughtful people uh, that I've met. Um, not a flashy story, but the very first time I actually met Rita was not in Texas, like where we all live, but it was on a friend's trip to New York. And I'll just keep this brief. We were getting ready for a day out on the town, and I usually wear like a chain, and I just slap it on, you know, like, where's the drinks? Like, let's get out of here. Um, but we were waiting. I think Rita and I had finished getting ready, and she noticed that the clasp had like migrated to the front, and usually you just keep it behind your neck hidden, right? And so wordlessly, uh, she came up and just like fixed it. Like again, first time ever meeting her. And I know that's not like a super flashy story, but it it like resonated with me um, because if she cares about something that small and is willing to, you know, go out of her way, then of course, you know, what is she going to do, like, when it's the big things, right? Um, and ever since then, uh, every time we've hung out, 
every interaction is just reiterated that that's the type of person that she is. Um, and since, you know, two individually great, awesome people, when they come together, uh, obviously create a great, awesome couple. And so um, I think everybody in this room, the fact that they decided to invite all of you here and then have you here for basically uh, one of the most important days of their life, I think it speaks volumes. I bet that all 200 some odd people here are you know, great people yourselves. Um, so I think everyone in the room would echo the sentiment um, when I say that I wish Nick and Rita a long, prosperous marriage with nothing but happiness in the future. Uh, a toast to Nick and Rita.